Welcome, to a Roll to Writer series. Thank you. You are a number one best-selling author, uh, educator, Thank, yep. and also entrepreneur. How were you initially introduced to the craft of writing? Uh, I, I've always been interested in writing. I've always been an avid book reader and had an interest in um, telling my own story in one medium or So um, I took a little bit of time off work and wrote my book, um, just some time to focus on the messages I actually wanted to get out um, into the world. So, um, yeah, that's that, that's how it started for me. As the author of the book, what inspired you to write the book? Um, my, my, that, that's a really easy question and a good question for me to answer. So The Broken World of Education, I've been a secondary teacher for um, 18 years now. Um, so the inspiration has come from all my experiences um, during my teaching career and some further learnings that I've done myself outside of my career. And I'm trying to amalgamate the two as well and say, hey, we've got this system, this whole system all around the world of um, education that more and more educators are becoming more and more vocal about things that aren't working um, and especially on the back of COVID where a lot of teachers have faced um, burnout and, and ha had to deal with some of their own sort of issues um, and issues again facing students and families. We've all been there or during COVID um, around the world but the things have been exacerbated quite a lot and it it's really, it's, it's time for change within our system and there's no better time than now when we're all awakening from this uh, pandemic slumber, if you like. As a teacher, you have experience working with children, teaching them math, science and physics. Out of all of the topics that you have had the privilege of teaching, is there anyone that came easier or challenging compared to the other? Um, look, they all have their own um, different set of challenges, absolutely, uh, math, science and, and physics. Um, I probably enjoy teaching maths a little bit more at this point in time than um, any of the science subjects. So I have been focusing, um, I've been teaching mainly maths for the past maybe seven or eight years, um, but they all definitely have their own set of challenges with regards to, um, you know, how, how best to help students learn. And a lot of it is finding the relevance to the world around them or, or where they are heading to see whether or not that, where they can use what we're actually teaching them. Also, you have certifications in neuro-linguistic programming. For some of us who are not aware of that specific niche, how would you describe it? Linguistic programming or NLP is basically um, a linking of the mind to your language, to your actions, to your behaviours, why you might be doing things a certain way without even consciously being aware of it. So it's a broadening of a perspective of uh, the role your unconscious mind plays with your conscious mind and how it drives your results and your actions in the real world. And what is timeline therapy? Timeline therapy is something that has been trademarked through the um, Tad James Foundation and it is basically dealing with past traumas and having a look at um, things that might have happened in your past that you might have kind of pushed aside that have kind of had a, a having a still having an effect on um, the way you behave, the way you think, the way you feel. So timeline therapy is a process that we can go through that can actually not bring that to the surface, but kind of disassociate any feelings associated with it. So when you're faced with similar situations, you're not going to run through the same old feelings of what you might have experienced in the past, whether or not you are consciously aware of it, um, that that's actually been happening. As the founder of What Can't Be Taught, you've been able to package your career experiences and your writings. It brings together a community of teachers 
students and parents. What is one very unique premise of what can be taught that accommodates the audience that nobody else yeah. has offered? Yeah, thank you. Um, it's My company, Learn What Can't Be Taught, is primarily at this point in time dealing with helping newer and beginning teachers um, find their feet. So I've found over the years that there's less and less time that is actually allocated to teachers or um, when they're learning the profession at, at universities to actually be taught what they actually need to know, like how to handle certain situations, behaviour management, time management, um, actually, and looking inside within yourself and how you feel about things and how that actually affects how you are teaching your particular topic. So Learn What Can't Be Taught has been set up primarily at this point in time to focus on helping new and beginning teachers build up their skills, build up their repertoire and be able to handle um, all the challenges that they face within the first couple of years that can quite often, and it still does, overwhelm a lot of new teachers. Um, So it's about giving them the tools and the skills to be able to more expertly handle those challenges that they're facing. Over the last two decades from your professional and teaching experiences, do you believe that there are proper writing curriculums in place to educate students or do we need to put in more of an effort to teach students how to write? Um, that's a really good question. I, I'm I'm not an English teacher. Um, I, well, I can speak from the point of view that uh, I think they're quality of the writing has probably declined even from what I see in my classrooms and the level of reading and comprehension and things like that. Um, I think there's a lot of things that need to be tweaked with our curriculum even all around the world. Um, A lot of the curriculums are completely jam-packed and they're completely bloated and we're just running basically on a timeline going okay we're going to do this topic for a couple of weeks now we're going to do this and that and we're just moving so fast that there's actually no time for students or teachers to sit down and play and create with the ideas that we're that we're trying to generate within them and stir up any excitement. So a lot of that has dissipated over the years immensely. Noral, referencing your book, The Broken World of Education, what makes your contribution to the craft of writing unique? Um, probably the, the perspective that I actually bring um, th- through my book as, as a uh, secondary teacher of 18 years, um, the perspective I bring is a complete unique perspective. It's written in a way like I'm having a conversation with you and telling stories about um, what I've been through in my career. So it's the uniqueness of my book in the sense is that is that you are getting a raw, unedited perspective of what it's like to be working inside a school from a teacher's perspective at this point in time and the issues with um, the issues that are in there that a lot of people are not aware of or have not even thought of because most people have not set foot inside a school since they were at school um, and they feel like that they the way things were done and the way things were taught when they were at school maybe 20 years ago is exactly the same. And I'm here to say things have completely changed as to um, what we're actually doing. The only thing that hasn't changed is the curriculum we're actually teaching. Um, There hasn't been so much movement forward with regards to that. But the issues we're facing with students, teachers, families, um, and even just the broader community um, I think more awareness needs to be brought to the surface with regards to um, those issues that, that you know, that our school communities are actually facing. Is there anything new that you have learned in the recent years that has changed your perspective on how you approach your own work? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think um, the NLP, the Neurolinguistic Programming, has been uh, has been such an eye opener with regards to um, how I w- will communicate um, with students and with parents as well. Um, so that's something that I have learned along along the way. But also a lot of my learnings have, have come from experiences in dealing with people. I think we tend to forget that schools are full of people. 
from all walks of life. They're full of students, they're full of teachers, they're full of families. And it is primarily a people-driven job. And I think that in itself, the experiences in dealing with people from all over the, from all walks of life, I think is is absolutely invaluable. And that is why teachers have such a um, a large skill set that is transferable to many professions. And finally, Noral, do you have a writing tip that you were taught or that you discovered that has made an immense difference in your productivity? Um, I, I actually found it um, really beneficial to, you know, when I was in a zone and I was ready to flow to actually have noise cancelling headphones on so I could just not hear any background noise at all and now I know some people might not uh, thrive with that but I found it really helpful for me and also things like even technology around my home like um, like a, a Google or something so I would if I've got an idea it for a sentence or a topic or something I would just speak to my to the devices and just say, you know, make a note. So rather than walking around with pen and paper everywhere, I, I actually have a, you know, digital device most places and will just kind of speak to it. Probably the biggest tip as well was the uh, read aloud function in Word. I found that extremely, extremely beneficial to hear when I was editing and going through all the process and writing the read aloud function in Word um, was very beneficial to hear what was I'd written down or typed on the on the page um, because quite often I picked up on little nuances that I my eyes had missed while I was reading my own words because I was skipping over it. Thank you for being generous with those tips. Those are very wise tips. And Noral, would you be kind in sharing with audiences where people can find your work and contact you? Absolutely. So um, if you have, if, if you Google the broken world of education, um, my book will come up. So you can purchase my books uh, through any online retailer. You can purchase directly from me within Australia and I'll, I'll send that out. Thank you so much for enlightening us on the writer's series.